in a galaxy far, far away. Actually, no, right in front of me. This is the new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphone, but does it live up to the hype? Let's discuss. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before or if you already subscribed, Welcome back. And today, yes, we are reviewing this puppy right here, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphone. I've been trying, testing, and using this smartphone for a couple weeks now, and let's just say that I've got a couple things to say. Without any further ado, let's just dive right into this review. Let's start things out by talking about the design of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. First off, I really do like the design of this smartphone. I like the way it looks and feels while in your hand and when you're just looking at it. It is made with an all glass exterior that looks and feels of high quality. It's sleek and honestly, comes across as kind of luxurious. And of course, it does have those curved edges on the front, which are exceptionally noticeable, considering the true edge-to-edge -edge display that you get here. Plus, it is complete with an ultrasonic in-display fingerprint reader. And of course, your IP68 dust and water resistance rating, meaning the Note 20 Ultra can withstand dust, dirt, and sand, and even be fully submerged into water at a maximum depth of 1.5 meters for up to 30 minutes. No worries you have to worry about here when it comes to your water and dust resistance worries. Say that one 10 times fast. No worries, 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 worries. But it's true, you don't gotta worry about it. And you do have stereo speakers, one on the top of the phone and one on the bottom that do sound all right. They sound even better when you have Dolby Atmos turned on, a setting you could actually turn on within this phone. But speakers that just sound okay, definitely not speakers that blow me away. And you do have your little hidden away S Pen, which of course, is what makes this Note 20 Ultra the Note device that it is. And last but certainly not least, a massive, absolutely massive camera bump. This is definitely one of the biggest camera bumps I have seen in recent years, uh, maybe even the biggest camera bump ever. You can't miss it. But from a design perspective, I do overall really enjoy this phone. I do like oversized phones, that's just my thing. But if you do not like big phones, if you like something that's a lot easier to put into your pocket and take out and just use one-handed, you're probably not gonna like the oversized size of the Note 20 Ultra. But if you do like that, big pass for this thing. Just something to consider because it is a very large phone. I mean, it's basically the size of my face. And you do have three mystic colors to choose from. You have mystic black, mystic bronze, or mystic white. Obviously, your boy had to go with that mystic black. Matte black or just black everything. In this case, mystic black. So black everything. But all three colors do look pretty sharp and fancy. I don't think you could go wrong with any of them. But back to that display, the Note 20 Ultra has one of the best displays I think I have ever seen in a smartphone. On the Note 20 Ultra, you are working with a 6.9 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display. That, like we said earlier, pretty much goes as edge to edge as you possibly can. There's a very, very slight bezel on the top and the bottom, but honestly, Nothing I would be concerned about. It's it's edge to edge. It also boasts a 496 PPI pixel density, an HDR certification, upwards of 1500 nits of maximum brightness, and something I personally love, a super snappy, smooth, and responsive 120 hertz refresh rate. I don't care, I'm a refresh rate snob. I could tell the difference on this phone. I love the 120 hertz. It makes a big difference. I love it. And in terms of the front camera, you do have a front facing camera cutout, but it's very non-intrusive. Honestly, barely noticeable with certain wallpapers and within certain apps that you're using. A camera cutout that is definitely less noticeable and less intrusive than a massive notch, but that's, we'll discuss that at another time. And again, all that complete with these curved glass edges. So yes, with all that being said, I love this display. This is a very good display, so fun to use. It's one of those displays that honestly, I find myself wanting to use this phone more and more just because of the display experience. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's got great contrast. The colors, the snappiness, the responsiveness, all that backed with a 120 hertz refresh rate. Overall, 
a home run for a display in a smartphone. But one thing I will have to say is I'm really not a huge fan of those curved glass edges on the front of the phone itself. It looks cool and it feels cool, but honestly, I feel like it's just kind of gimmicky in a weird way. I do find myself accidentally or not being able to press certain areas of the screen because of that. Like I get the symmetry perspective we have here. I, it makes sense to have the curved edge glass on the front, but it probably would have been better overall just to have a flat, Face, just to take away some of those accidental presses or non-responsive presses that I have experienced from time to time. That's not something that should make or break your purchase, but considering how big of an advocate I am for just totally squared off smartphones these days, that's something I probably would have liked to have seen. But what about those cameras? Are they good? Do they suffice? What's their deal? Well, considering how massive this camera bump is, I do have to admit, the rear camera system on the Note 20 Ultra does boast a lot of camera computing power. It houses three lenses and a laser. One lens being your 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle lens. Another one being your 12 megapixel f3 tele lens with up to five times optical zoom. And of course your behemoth 108 megapixel f1.8 wide angle lens. You are also getting optical image stabilization and laser autofocus to really help you nail the shot that you're trying to get. And on the front of the device with that front facing camera, you're just getting your 10 megapixel selfie camera with an f2.2 aperture. And I don't really talk about video recording in smartphones a whole heck of a lot, but it's worth mentioning here because if recording video on smartphones is your thing, you're getting up to 8K, 24 frames per second in the Note 20 Ultra. 8K, 24 frames per second, that truly is ultra. That's incredible. And to think all that resolution is being packed into a device that fits into your pocket, Pretty cool tech spec. But all that's fine and dandy, let's talk about how those cameras actually perform. Once again, I gotta be honest here, I love the Note 20 Ultra camera system. It's probably in part because that beautiful, vibrant display that's making all my photos look astounding. But I don't understand why some people critique Samsung picture science. I've been blown away by some of the photos that this phone is capable of. Some of these shots are literally mind blowing. Close up shots, tele shots, night mode shots, all the shots I took on the Note 20 Ultra did not disappoint. Crisp, clean, impressive, not to mention the pro tools you get built in to the actual native camera app. I just love using and taking photos on this phone. I can't think of a whole lot of bad things to say when it comes to that. Do I wish the phone was flush? Do I wish there was no camera bump whatsoever? Yes, I mean, of course. That's just something I've been complaining about since like the iPhone 6. But considering how common camera bumps are, I'm kind of used to it by now. I would still like it flush, but yes, the cameras definitely make up for the fact of how huge that thing actually is. My gosh. But we do have to talk about storage options considering how many fancy photos and videos you're probably gonna be taking. The Note 20 Ultra is available in three basic base storage options. You get 128 gigs, 256 gigs, and 512 gigs. But you do have the option of expanding your storage up to one terabyte of space using a sold separately micro SD card. But this would not be a Note 20 Ultra review without talking about the S Pen. Gotta talk about this little stylus pen looking thing, right? The S Pen is an integral part of the Note 20 system. And full disclosure here, you guys probably know by now if you guys watch my videos, I'm not a huge stylus guy. I honestly, I don't even know where my Apple Pencil is. I lost it last week, still no idea where it is. But in my testing of the S Pen on the Note 20 Ultra, I'm actually really liking it. You get a nine millisecond latency when using the S Pen on the Note 20 Ultra, and it comes complete with this awesome drawing sound that teases your brain to make you feel like you're actually putting pencil or pen to paper. You also have cool gestures you could do. It's a lot more than just a stylus. So overall, the S Pen works exactly as you would hope it would, and then some, and if the S Pen's your thing, it's probably the best it's ever been. It is the best it's ever been. But all this Note 20 Ultra goodness is backed by the performance specs that this phone boasts. That's what makes this phone possible. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphone is sporting 12 gigs of RAM. And if you're here in the US, you're getting that Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. The 865 Plus is an absolute beast and pretty much allows you to do anything you could possibly dream of on this device. Gaming, absolutely. Photo and video taking and editing, Sure. Transmitting holographic selfies of yourself? Well, it's that's not exactly possible yet, but if it was, guarantee you this phone would be able to do it. Now, if you're only planning on sending emails, updating your Twitter, maybe watching a few BMAC YouTube videos, is this phone overkill? Absolutely. But chances are, if you're watching this video, if you're looking at getting the Note 20 Ultra, you're probably not planning on doing just that. You are planning on doing a lot more, in which case, 
this phone shouldn't disappoint. But all of this is dependent on battery life, right? How long can we actually expect this puppy to live for? We do have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery packed into the Note 20 Ultra, which is a very solid size. That's actually bigger than a lot of other phones that are on the market these days. With the battery itself equipped with up to 15 watts of wireless charging, reverse charging of your other wireless charging capable devices at 15 watts, and up to 25 watts of fast wire charging. And if you're wondering what that 25 watts of fast charging actually provides, you could probably expect a zero to 50% charge in 30 minutes or a zero to 100% charge in just over an hour. In terms of screen time, now this varies a lot. I've seen a lot of different numbers, but based on what I could conclude, figure about six hours of screen on time when using the Note 20 Ultra. Now, obviously there's a lot of different variables that could go into that, whether you're doing a lot of processor intensive tasks or if you have that maximum screen brightness jacked all the way up, there's a bunch of different things that could affect your actual screen on time, but based on what I've seen, figure about six hours of screen on time. Personally for me, that's pretty satisfactory considering all that you're getting in this phone, all that you could do, I'll take six hours of screen on time. Is there room for improvement? Sure, there's always room for improvement when it comes to battery, but six hours, solid. So with all this having been said, when it comes to the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphone, here is what I think at the end of the day. I think this device is awesome. And on top of that, the things that matter to me most, the photos, just as if not more mind blowing than the photos I'm used to. The specs, definite home run. The display, overall making a very positive difference for me. And we didn't even talk about the Samsung OS a whole lot, but the OS experience on this device is pretty powerful. Lots of features, I'm discovering new ones every day. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra really is a well-designed, well-executed smartphone. As always, if you guys wanna find out more or if you wanna cop one of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphones for yourself, you guys could actually head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash Note 20 Ultra. bmac.link slash Note 20 Ultra. Or as always, there will be a clickable link in the video description box below as well. And do me a favor real quick, please comment down below your thoughts on the Note 20 Ultra. Will you be getting one? Will you be switching? Are you kind of not impressed? What Whatever your thoughts are, please comment them in the comment section below. As always, I'll be liking, hearting, and replying to some of my favorites. I am going to go charge up my iPhone with my Note 20 Ultra. This is just, this is, this is witchcraft. Reverse wireless charging, baby. Gotta love it. I will see you guys in my next video. I still am having somewhat of a hard time getting over the size of the camera bump, though. That camera bump do be thick, though. It be thick.